<clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City's um, August 12th, 2021 virtual hearing. My name is Nicholas Blendy. I'm the Deputy Executive Secretary of the Board, and I will be your MC through the day. Opening, if you'll turn your attention to the outline of the packet, um, you can see the overview of the things that I'm about to go through in preparation for the ground rules of this hearing. Um, First, a brief introduction to WebEx. Uh, Cisco WebEx is an online meeting platform that the city of Baltimore has been using to conduct all of its virtual meetings uh, since the outset of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Board of Ed Estimates, the City Council, and the Planning Department have all used WebEx to, ho to hold virtual meetings uh, since that time. Some basics in order to fully utilize the WebEx system, Members of the general public um, should have access to a laptop, an iPad, a smartphone, or a similar device with a camera and a microphone. And if your electronic device does not have microphone capabilities, um, you may turn your camera on and then use the dial-in number and uh, use two pieces of technology to make it happen. Um, in order to participate in the WebEx meeting, members of the public must download the WebEx app through their smartphones or click on the following link to access the hearing through the web. Um, you can see that information on the screen. The board suggests that if you're going to use a smartphone, iPad, or a similar device that you have downloaded an application and run a test um, in, in order to ensure that you have had access to the program. If any member of the general public does not have access to a computer, a smartphone, or a similar device, they can call in to the number below and enter the following access code and listen only live to the hearing. All materials, evidence, and related items for today's docket uh, are available on our website. The copies of the short docket, which provide a brief description of the cases before the board today, and the long docket, which include all, applic all application materials or uh, evidence to be presented before the board, can be found on the board's website under hyperlinks for August 12, 2021. For the virtual hearings, the board is observing a 48-hour rule. Uh, all evidence to be considered by the board um, is in the long docket, and the board was accepting evidence from any part of the hearing up until 11 a.m. on Tuesday. And all evidence should be submitted via uh, email to the Assistant Executive Secretary, Ms. Stacy Russell, um, at stacy.russell at baltimorecity.gov. An evidence note, licensees uh, should make all efforts to provide any documentation they plan on submitting prior to that deadline and attempts to introduce evidence at the hearing not submitted prior to that may lead to a postponement of your case. In addition to the posting of the docket online, licensees, witnesses, and their representatives shall be served with notice according to the law. Next slide. The procedures for today's docket. Uh, I will be reading the instructions and calling the cases. Um, I'll be explaining the ground rules to uh, the public and the licensees and their council representatives. I will call each case in order as listed on the short docket. The chairman will then ask for the licensee and his or her representative and any and all uh, BLLC and police department or other personnel to identify themselves and be sworn in by the court reporter. When I call the case, the board will then conduct an evidentiary hearing, which will include the calling of witnesses, hearing testimony, and reviewing any documents entered into the record to determine whether or not a violation occurred. Upon the conclusion of the hearing, which may include a closing oh, arguments by a licensee and or uh, his or her representative, the board will vote to determine whether or not a violation occurred. If the board finds a violation has occurred, the board may hear testimony or review evidence before imposing a sentence. The board will provide an opportunity to the general public to present testimony at the mitigation phase of the hearing. If an individual would like to testify, then uh, he or she must use the raise your hand feature within WebEx and I will recognize you, then you will identify yourself, be sworn in uh, by the court reporter and then testify. Uh, if you do wish to testify, uh, you are subject to cross questioning by the board and cross examination by an attorney or the applicant. And please uh, remember, if you have only access to a phone, you will not be able to testify. You must have video uh, per camera proceedings <clears throat> to, excuse me, video camera capabilities to uh, present in the proceedings. And then at the sentencing phase, once the board hears all the evidence and testimony from the mitigation phase, the board will make a sentencing determination, which may include a fine, a suspension, and or a revocation of a license. Some general ground rules and helpful information for today's hearing. 
We ask that you please mute yourself when you are not speaking. This will minimize feedback and extra noise. We remind you to please identify yourself and state the spelling of your name before you speak. We ask you to please speak slowly and in a clear voice so that the court reporter understands exactly what is being said and who is saying it. We note that this event is running live on Charm TV and a court reporter is present uh, taking the record. Individuals who use profanity are disrespectful or unruly may be expelled from the virtual hearing. All attendees, applicants, licensees, and members of the public that wish to provide testimony during the hearings must be sworn in prior to giving testimony. We are taking no physical evidence of these proceedings and no amendments to application. That's not really relevant for today. These are all violations. Um, helpful reminders to improve the WebEx experience. Please be prepared and have read the materials ahead of time. Please have tested your video con conferencing platform as well. We ask that you be in a, uh, please be in a quiet space with good light and a strong internet connection so you can be seen and heard clearly. We ask you to please be present and not be multitasking so that when the time comes, uh, we can move forward efficiently. And we, above all, ask that you please be patient with yourself and with others. We acknowledge that the online world always provides us with a um, you know, fun thing to work through from time to time. With that said, the short docket is up on the screen. There are five matters before the board today as the sixth was postponed due to unavailability of counsel. Um, Mr. Chairman, are you ready to proceed? I am. Then the first matter is I will move uh, licensee and counsel into the panel. Uh, li licensee and counsel should be able to turn their video camera equipment on. Licensee is Terrence Dixon, New Terra Cafe, LLC, trading as New Terra Cafe, 101 East 25th Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21218. Licensee uh, holds a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license and is charged with three violations of the board's rules stemming from one incident on May 3rd, 2021, a violation of Rule 3.12 General Welfare, a violation of Rule 4.16 Illegal Conduct, and a violation of Rule 4.14, live entertainment without authorization. And Mr. Chairman, I remind you that uh, Council had made some preliminary motions which were denied, and uh, we have been requested to put that on the record before commencing proceedings. Okay. Uh, Council, will you identify yourself for the record, please? Yes, sir. My name is Robert Fulton DeShield. Good morning. Um, and who's with you, Mr. DeShield? This is uh, the owner of the establishment, Mr. Dixon, along with uh, one of his uh, colleagues, okay. who's uh, not visible probably at the moment. Okay. Uh, and do we also have inspectors Tudhope and Jordan here? Yes, they're in the panel. Um, let me make sure they have their cameras on. Yes, yes. I'm present. They're yes, both present. Okay, Mr. DeShield, your clients are charged Three violations. Will any of them be admissions, or are they all denials? All denied. In fact, in fact, all denied. I'll, I'll wait to say further. Okay. Um, and just uh, to take up what Mr. Uh, Bundy has said, you had preliminarily filed a motion to dismiss uh, the Rule Three One Two violation, which was denied, and then you had also filed a motion for hearings in person, which we had to deny because the mayor is not open. City Hall, and we don't know when he's ever going to open City Hall due to the COVID restrictions. So we can't resume personal hearings at any time in the foreseeable future. Um, so let's swear uh, the witnesses, please. I, I still have a preliminary matter, Mr. Chair, if I may. Okay. Uh, with respect to the motion to dismiss, which I again want to put on the record, and I would add to that the following number one, uh, and this is with respect to violation 3.12, which is based, as far as I can see, entirely upon the inspector's assessment of the volume of music being played on May 3rd, 2021. I would, I would invite the board's attention to the conditional use permit uh, issued on September 9, 2011, which specifically authorized live entertainment uh, and more particularly, specifically for the purpose of of, uh, of that action, incorporating expressly the noise pollution ordinance of Baltimore City. I would I would further uh, invite the, the board's attention to 
the courts and judicial proceedings article of the uh, Maryland Annotated Code, section 10-911, which specifically provides and expressly provides that for the purpose, that in fact, I read it, in any legal proceeding of any nature, the quantities and qualities of noise may be proved by evidence of tests made with any instrument designed and constructed to measure and indicate or record the presence of sound, including such devices commonly called sound level, level meters and frequency analyzers. Together, Mr. Chairman, I submit that the charge or the, the alleged violation under 3.12 cannot stand because it is undisputed that the inspectors did not use a meter to measure the volume of sound and that rather their assessment of the violation was based entirely upon the personal uh, level of sound, I guess, that the uh, inspector at the time thought was excessive. But by law, I submit the board in its, in its, in its, uh, in its duty to enforce the uh, conditions upon the liquor license, which were, which were imposed under the conditional use permit, must decide that that, uh, that violation cannot stand because uh, there was no meter being used. Okay. Uh, is, that, is that it, Mr. DeShield? And, and, and with respect to the second motion, just so that the record is clear, uh, the reason that I, I wanted to have an in-person uh, hearing in the event the board did not dismiss 3112 is that it, I, it, was imp it was important to me, and I still maintain that the board, that I be able to demonstrate to the board the level of sound as it was uh, on May 3rd, 2021. And in, in, and in an effort to do that, we contacted sound engineers and were informed that computer speakers, even with amplification, could not reproduce the sound at a level uh, permitted under this ordinance or and therefore could not reproduce the sound at a level so that the board itself could actually hear uh, the level of sound or music that was uh, that was being uh, uh, that was uh, displayed on that particular event. Uh, and with that, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, I, that will end my preliminary remarks. Okay. Uh, as to the latter, um, you know, our hands are really tied. We we have no ability to have personal hearings and don't know when, if ever, we will again. So I, I, I just can't, uh, there's nothing I can do about that. So I had to deny that. As to the first, um, I think your argument is um, uh, reasonable. Uh, I disagree with you. I think that um, at least historically, and I think going forward that our inspectors um, have the ability to go into a residential neighborhood and with common sense and hearing determine whether uh, the music or other entertainment that's ongoing exceeds what is reasonable under the circumstances. Uh, I think the the standard you cite is a zoning standard that doesn't necessarily apply to us and the statute that you cite is certainly permissive and says may, but it doesn't say shall. Um, so I would deny the motion for all those reasons. Shall we proceed? Uh, it, it does say shall, by the way, but yeah, we can proceed. Okay. Um, uh, so, um, who's going to testify for the board? It would be um, Inspector Tudhope and then Inspector Jordan, but Inspector Tudhope first. Okay. And everybody's been sworn. I forget. No, no we haven't done that yet. Okay, let's swear everybody. Okay. Um, and this is the reporter. Um, would I actually be be able to get the spelling for the attorney's name uh, for uh, Mr. Dixon? Uh, the shield is D A S H I E L L. Okay, thank you. Um, and uh, would I be able to get the name of the person uh, who's in the room with Mr. Dixon? Are they going to be testifying as well? No. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Um, so, Mr. Dixon and. Um, Inspector Jordan and um, Inspector Tudhope, uh, please raise your right hand. Um, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, 
the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you God or under penalty of perjury? I do. Inspector Tuttle, if I do. Inspector Jordan, I do. Okay. Um, and Mr. Dixon? I do. Thank you. All right, thank you all. So, uh, Inspector Tuttle, do you want to tell us what you observed on May 3, 2021? Yes, sir. On May 3rd, 2021, at approximately 10.44 p.m., I, Inspector Taro, along with Inspector Jordan, responded to a 311 complaint, complaint number 21-00329198 for Tara's Cafe, located at 101 East 25th Street. The complaint was for live music after 10 p.m. on a week on a weeknight for two consecutive weeks. I, Inspector Taro, contacted the complainant on the way in as per our SOP. I, Inspector Taro, and Jordan arrived at the establishment at approximately 11.50 p.m. and I could hear extremely loud music playing from inside my car and when I got out. I, Inspector Taro, noticed people leaving through the alleyway on the side of the building located on St. Paul Street. Upon further investigation, I, Inspector Taro and Jordan found that the back patio area belonging to Tara's Cafe was open and had live band playing outside. I, Inspector Taro and Jordan made contact with the owner, Mr. Terrence Dixon, about the volume of the music. The owner stated that the volume was louder than usual because it was the last song and that, that the last song is usually louder and longer for jazz bands and they were about to end. I, Inspector Tuttle and Jordan asked Mr. Dixon for his license to verify that he was allowed live entertainment. Mr. Dixon was unable to provide any license to the inspectors. He stated that he did not know where they were upstairs. I, Inspector Tuttle and Jordan instructed Mr. Dixon to contact us the next day and send licensing through to the office. He was handed Inspector Jordan's business card to do so. I, Inspector Tuttle and Jordan informed the licensee that he was receiving a violation for his music volume that night. Inspectors left the establishment without any further incidents. After further review the next day in the office, it was established that Mr. Dixon had a live entertainment license, but it did not extend. It only extended to the second floor of the establishment and not outside. Uh, Mr. Shea, you have questions for the inspector? Yes, one question. How did you determine that the level of the music was excessive? When I arrived for the 311, I, it was valid. I could hear music from inside my car on the corner of 25th and St. Paul, and my partner also agreed. Did you have, or the other inspector, did either of you have a device of any kind that is commonly used to measure the volume of sound or the volume of noise? No, sir. And how, how are you able, inspector, from one location to the, to the other to verify that what is excessive on St. Paul and 25th is also excessive at St. Paul and Maryland Avenue? If you understand like what I'm trying to say. In my report, when I arrived, I could hear music from inside my car. And as I stepped out, I could hear the music. The establishment is surrounded by residential. And it was, I determined that it was disturbing the peace. No, that's not my question. My question is, what do you use in your own mind to make sure that what is excessive on one day in time is consistent? to another day and time how do how do you measure yourself to make sure that you aren't deter you aren't calling excessive in one place something that you don't find excessive someplace else sir the music was loud that's how i determine it when i get out of my car and i can hear it many I, feet away it is loud i apologize if i'm not being precise enough in my question let me let me let me let me let me give let me give a little bit of background a little foundation you do agree that that your determination of what is excessive should be the same regardless of what establishment you are inspecting correct yes sir depending okay. on if they're in a residential area or not right so how do you know 
from one establishment to the next that your sensibilities are the same? I can only speak for this case. I do case for case. And on this day, the music was loud at this establishment. Well, I think you understand the question, so I'm not going to ask it again. No further questions. Okay. Did you want to have your uh, client testify, Mr. DeShield? Uh, not on this issue. No, no, sir. Okay. Um, well, are there other issues uh, that we haven't covered? I think he's charged with the excessive noise. He's charged with not having a license that uh, permitted the outdoor uh, music, and he's charged with not having the records as well. Uh, I Is think she could all of that. I, I I thought that the inspector was going on to, was going to testify with regard to each of the alleged violations separately. But if if but if the if the inspector's testimony has concluded and that's going to be the testimony supporting all three of the alleged violations, then I would simply say I would point out to the chair and the board that the that the violation alleged under 414 and 416 is exactly the same. It's, it's, they should be merged because the, 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 the allegation that music was being played uh, that, be, that wasn't permitted uh, is the same under both of those charges. Uh, Actually, it, we view the rules differently, but um, understood. Right. So, but in any event, the response to the allegation that music was being played unlawfully or that there was unlawful live entertainment is that my client was forced by the circumstances that we all face as a result of COVID-19 in effect to move his business to the outdoor area where where eating had been permitted uh, was permitted uh, some time ago and, and let me tell you why I say uh, why I believe it was forced to do that we all know that uh, on March 5th of 2020, the governor issued his first emer emergency order relating to COVID, followed on March 19th of 2020 by the city's first order by then uh, Mayor Jack Young. But then on March 26th of 2020, uh, Mayor Scott issued an executive order. And under that order, with respect to restaurants, it, said, it established that uh, for the purpose of uh, avoiding uh, as much uh, devastation as possible restaurants were not permitted to have more to achieve more than 50 percent capacity indoors and 75 percent capacity out of doors that same formula remained in effect all the way through may 14 of 2021 which i think was the last executive order issued by the by the mayor the point that i'm making is that excuse me excuse me one second I got a new phone that I don't know how to turn off yet, <laughs> but um, uh, uh, the 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 mayor reiterated that on May 14th of 2021. Now, also uh, the 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 reason I think that the uh, city and the state ultimately established some threshold for restaurants was that was in recognition of the fact that these types of establishments. Uh, serve are in the public interest. They serve, they employ a number of individuals. And the last thing anybody wanted to do uh, during the pandemic was to cause people to lose employment uh, when it could be avoided. The only way, or I should say, the way that the Terra Cafe and many other restaurants sought to try to retain, keep their businesses open and keep their employees on staff was to, uh, was to uh, uh, configure their operation in a manner where they could achieve the greatest uh, the greatest percentage of occupancy, uh, and so therefore the Terra Cafe uh, looked towards the uh, occupancy of seventy five percent capacity as its goal and its objective, and in so doing, uh, expended considerable sums uh, uh, further developing the area that's now referred to as the Jerk Garden. Uh, I submit to the board that the movement of the business, and when I say business, I'm talking about the, the entire business, including the right to have live entertainment from inside the building to the jerk garden was solely as a consequence of the impact of the pandemic. Uh, that if, if the, if Terra Cafe, if, but for the pandemic, the Terra Cafe would have continued as it had been 
having live entertainment in the area within the building. But as a result of the pandemic, quite frankly, that area in the building was literally not used at all because there was no way, there, was no, there were no resources, there was no government funding available to retrofit the physical structure. So that the only way to, full, to, to take full advantage of, of the uh, conditions then prevailing and applicable was to move the business as such to the jerk garden area, which had already been permitted for outdoor eating. And on that grounds, I would submit that the pandemic, COVID-19, was a superseding event that would justify uh, what, what would be uh, a temporary, uh, temporary, so long as the pandemic exists, a temporary uh, deviation from the precise uh, uh, provisions of the conditional use permit uh, uh, under which live entertainment was first authorized. Thank you. Okay, do the commissioners have questions? Commissioner Guy, I have no questions. No questions, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Blendy, do we have other witnesses? If any member of the public wishes to testify on this matter before the board, please use the raise your hand feature in the WebEx platform. Mr. Chairman, I do not see anyone using the raise your hand feature. Okay. Uh, Mr. DeShiel, Mr. Dixon, um, listen, the board is sympathetic to our licensees who had a very difficult time during the pandemic and probably continue to have a difficult time maintaining their employees and maintaining their businesses in the face of extraordinary circumstances. I also note that uh, the new Terra Cafe has had this license since 2017 with no history of violation. So um, uh, while um, it may have sounded as though I was being a little harsh earlier. I, I didn't intend it that way. I think that this is a good establishment, it seems, on the record. And I understand why what happened occurred. But I do believe, on the basis of Inspector Tudhope's testimony, that we have uh, sufficient facts to find violations of April 3.12, 4.16, and 4.14 on May 3. Um, because I, I believe, unlike I disagree with Mr. DeShia, although I recognize this argument uh, that we are entitled to have our inspectors make uh, subjective judgments based on uh, their common sense uh, hearing when they're in a residential neighborhood as to whether the music is too loud uh, and when they're responding to a 311 neighborhood complaint. I also think um, this license, as we've stated, was uh, did not permit outdoor music and uh, it did not permit music past 9 p.m. on a Monday evening. Um, so for those reasons, I would find the uh, licensee in violation of these three rules, but I would be, uh, I would impose only nominal fines of um, $25 each as to each one uh, and give him 30 days to pay. Commissioner? Commissioner Guy, based upon the, uh, the, the proffer of, of Mr. DeShields and the evidence uh, presented before the board this morning, I also would find them. Uh, I, I would also find them in violation of Rule three point one two, general welfare, violation of Rule four point one six, illegal conduct, and violation of Rule four point one four, live entertainment without authorization taking place on May the third, twenty twenty one. I also concur with the fine of twenty five dollars each, uh, payable uh, within thirty days. So based upon the uh, proffers from Mr. DeShiel and the testimony from Ms. Tudhope, I too would uh, find a violation of Rule 3.12. I think uh, based upon uh, Inspector Tudhope's uh, experience and the fact that she testified that the music was too loud, in fact, she could hear it in her car, um, I think uh, uh, makes uh, the licensee uh, in violation of Rule 3.12. Uh, similarly, in terms of Rule 4.16 and Rule 4.14, I also find violations per se based upon uh, the uh, BMZA uh, uh, conditional use of 2011, which makes abundantly clear that, uh, that this licensee was not permitted to have uh, live music outside of the second floor at certain times. 
although I do recognize the argument and the, the, the argument for Mr. DeShiel with respect to COVID. Uh, for those reasons, I too would concur with the uh, nominal imposition of a $25 fine for each violation. Ms. Russell? I'd call Zippets for the record. Board of Zippet 1, violation report, Inspector Tud Hope. Board of Zippet 2, service request summary dated 5321. Zippet number 3, use permit issued 9 5 2017. Zippet number 4, BMZA, decision dated 9 19 2011. And Zippet number 5, BLLC SOP. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. DeShield, Mr. Dixon. Good luck. Good day. That, that concludes this matter before the board, licensee, and council will receive follow-up instructions on how to pay the fine via uh, further correspondence from this agency. But, Mr. Chair, before you, close, before you close, Mr. Dixon does have a statement that he would like to make, if you would. That's fine. Okay. You know what? Good afternoon, board. Um, you know, it, 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 you have me in a very, very challenging state right now, you know. During COVID, when this first came out, I sent my COVID plan to Lieutenant Governor, share with him my vision of everything outside. All right, we've kept 20 people working the whole COVID. We have fed Baltimore City. We have had major articles in reference to the energy that we've propelled us in reference to the micro businesses in Baltimore City. All right, we're not, we're not breaking the law. We're thinking outside the box in reference to keeping in people employed, keeping and, and focusing on this COVID fatigue for our community. If you do not understand business, then maybe some of these things that I've done are very challenging for people to understand, all right? The hospitality industry has been hit, okay? All right? And just as the city has made provision for so many people to be outside and do things, uh, at one point in time with the liquor board, you could have drinks and go outside your door. And I am really challenged that all that we've done right here in reference to bringing people together and the fatigue that we're at this point right now that you guys are punishing me for this. All right. This is completely not the new Baltimore that that I've envisioned of us doing and moving forward. This is just like the same old thing. And also, this is not a residential neighborhood. This is a commercial neighborhood. OK, no doubt on it. And I'm, I'm really just boggled and taken back that with all of the accolades that we continue to get, that we still deal with the small things of Kate and Lash for surviving, okay? All right, and, and that's about my statement for today. I'm just really uh, kind of disappointed with this whole hearing piece right here, right now, because the fine of, of $25 is not the money that I'm talking about, it's that you're saying that I'm wrong. You're saying that I'm wrong for coming up with a new way, because I'd rather hear, hear music than gunshots, murder, and mothers crying in Baltimore City. And that's what we do here, okay? And we did make the motion in reference to expanding, but the MOU that you actually look at with this is over. Oh. I just wanted to share that. All right, okay. I just wanted to share that in the midst of all this, that you guys are, that we're down, and that Baltimore City is continually kicking small micro businesses. All right, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, appreciate your comments. Um, okay, Mr. Blendy, let's move to the next case. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, give me one second. Okay. The next matter, or, excuse me, the next matter before the board today, uh, licensee Ganga Prasad Adhikari, Ram B. K. C. and Joshua A. P. Patel, 517 Broadway, LLC, trading as Main Street Bar and Liquors. Uh, licensee is located at 3724 Eastern Avenue, Baltimore, Maryland, 21224. Licensee holds a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. Uh, licensee is charged with two violations of board rules stemming from the same incident on July 7, 2021, violation of Rule 4.01a, sales to minors, and a violation of Rule 3.03c, records. Um, this is the underage task force, so please give me a moment, Mr. Chair, to move a bunch of folks into the panel. Are the ladies represented by counsel? I do not believe so. I'm moving them 
uh, separately in and to the panel because I see two of them. Uh, if they are represented, they can note, please, for the board. Uh, so Mr. Adhikari and Mr. Patel are in. And uh, our licensees, can you hear me? Adhikari and Patel? Yes. Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Hi, yes. Yeah. Are you represented by an attorney today? We are not, no. Or, okay. So the, there's your answer, Mr. Chairman. All right. Let's swear in Mr. Isaac. Patari and Mr. Patel, as well as whoever's going to testify for the board. So, okay. sorry to interrupt you. Uh, our Mr. Adhikari just left, but um, or actually, he's still here. Never mind. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, okay. And if you all could turn on the camera feature, you should be able to find start video at the bottom of your um, <laughs> WebEx now that you've been moved into the panel. And Mr. Chairman, all witnesses are now in as soon as. Okay. Uh, that would be. So we have Chief Chris Amalis, Agent, um, I believe, the, I'm sorry, we have the uh, BPD Vice, so Detectives Gatto, Detective Greenhill, Detective Lebrun. We have the cadet who is, Get out of here. yeah, has been moved in and been explained that he doesn't need you turn on the video camera, which we can get to that, and it would be uh, Agent per Perez, Inspector Robinson, and Chief Chris Amalis, and Cadet is Jay Thomas. All right, let's square everyone. Okay. All right, um, please raise your right hand. Okay. Um, and uh, is Mr. Adikari, is he coming back? Or Deepak, raise your right hand. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God or under penalty of perjury? And please state your name before your response. Yeah. Joshua Patel, I swear. Agent Perez, I do. Chief Chris Alice, I do. Abraham Gatto, I do. Detective Greenhill, I do. Detective LeBron, I do. Do we have Cadet Thomas? Uh, Cadet Thomas? Cadet Thomas? Can you hear? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, you still have, even though your camera is not on for to protect your privacy per the board's instructions, uh, you still have to uh, swear to, uh, on the record, to tell the truth. I do. Okay. Okay, uh, Mr. Um, and, and then, oh, oh, sorry, um, I still need uh, Mr. Adhikari um, and uh, Detective Robinson, and I think there might have been one other person. If, uh, if Agent Perez will probably be sufficient. I don't know if we're going to need all that testimony. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mr. Patel, you're, uh, you all are charged with two violations, a sale to minor on July 7 and failure to produce records. Do you wish to admit those violations or deny them? Uh, the two charges are one of the same. Am I correct? Is that correct? No. One has to do with a sale to minor and the other has to do the, with failure to produce your records. Oh, yeah. We are pleading guilty to those. Okay, so do you want to explain to the board what happened on July 7th? Yeah, absolutely. So um, basically, you know, uh, inheriting or running, starting this business during the pandemic, it was a blessing in disguise because the business, the liquor business is doing rather well uh, given the large volume of sales. But um, that said, uh, there have been a lot of unique challenges. A lot of the times people wearing masks, um, and now that we've gotten into the phase of people not wearing masks, uh, one challenge I've been having, because I've been working, you know, sometimes 10, 12 hour days, is that I'm having the hardest time finding employees to take over my shifts because Amazon being less than a mile away, they're kind of taking all the good minimum wage employees. So, um, so yeah, you know, all of our employees, like my business partner, Mr. D uh, Adhikari and ourselves, we have our alcohol awareness training. We're fully aware of the rules. We uh, ID 10 out of 10 of the times, 
And in this unique situation, uh, my cousin was visiting and he had given me permission to go to a doctor's appointment. And pretty much I explained to him, you just bring it up, you just do this, you know, this is how uh, this works. And um, that said, uh, he did not check this person's ID, which was against the rules. And uh, we're sorry, we'll work better, we'll improve. Um, but, you know, uh, going along what I've gone and learned in my training, um, you know, this, this is the first time we've had this offense and I'm, we're gonna try our best to make sure it doesn't happen again. Do you maintain your records on the premises? We do, and it was on the wall. It just was not, um, he didn't know what he was doing in that moment. Okay. Uh, and Mr. Patel, you've had this license since January, is that correct? Yeah, it was uh, It was transferred over from, we acquired a business. And it was transferred over in January. And you were just in front of the board in July? Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Um, so um, it seems like uh, you or someone else needs to take closer control over what's going on. I understand. I, I sympathize with you, what you're saying what about you're saying. masks and customers and employees are difficult to maintain. I know that's going on in the industry, but uh, I still look As like- As need to take better, uh, hold a tighter grip, I get it. Yeah, I mean, uh, because to be in front of us twice in the first few months of holding the license is not setting a good record for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I understand. And I thought, out of the many battles we face in this industry, I didn't think this would be one of them. Uh, it was a, it was a stupid mistake. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Do the commissioners have any questions for Mr. Patel? I have no questions. No questions. Do we have public comment, Mr. Blendy? If any member of the public wishes to testify on this matter before the board, please use the raise your hand feature in the WebEx platform. Mr. Chairman, I do not see any member of the public who wishes to testify. Okay, Mr. Patel, on the basis of the materials containing the charging documents and your testimony and admission uh, of these two violations, I find a violation of Rule 4.01A, sale to minor on July 7, 2021, and a violation of Rule 3.03C, uh, records on July 7, 2021. Uh, yeah, we've been very lenient during this period, but. Uh, we were pretty lenient with you in July. I'm going to at least have to double. I'm going to impose $50 fines as to each of yep. the violations and give you 30 days to pay. Commissioners? Okay. Commissioner Guy, uh, based upon the evidence presented this morning and, and the testimony given, I also would concur that uh, I would find a violation of Rule 4.01 sales to a minor and violation of Rule. 3.13c records, uh, both taking place on July the 7th, 2021. I concur with the fine of $50 uh, per each uh, violation payable in 30 days. So based upon the charging documents, the testimony and the admission from Mr. Patel, I too find a violation of rule 4.01 on July 7th and a violation of rule 3.03 .03 on July 7th. And concur with the imposition of a $50 fine. I will say, Mr. Patel, that uh, this board in previous years um, will uh, file a, its own protest of renewal if you uh, have three charges in one year. So I would strongly encourage you to tighten up your operations. And if you need any assistance from the staff, please don't hesitate to reach out. Okay, and is that in the calendar year? A license year. And what's the time frame of that? It's uh, oh, it's, Blenny, it's April to March, May, May 1st to, to April 30th. Okay, well, I hope to have no more, but just just checking. So, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> All right. Ms. Russell. My cause is for the record Board Exhibit One Violation Report Inspector Perez dated 7721, Board Exhibit Two Bomber City Police Department Report Detective Gatto dated 7721. All right, thank you, Mr. Patel. Thank you. May I log off? Yes, uh, that concludes this matter before the board. Licensee will uh, receive follow-up instructions and correspondence from this agency with uh, how to pay the fine. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mr. Chair, are you ready for the next one? Yes, sir. I believe Mr. Fogelman is counsel for this hearing, or this client rather. Um, the third matter before the board today, uh, licensee 
David Parravano and Ivano Parravano, Conkling Holdings Incorporated, trading as K&D Sports Bar and Lounge, 200 South Conkling Street, uh, Baltimore, Maryland, 21224. Uh, license holds, or licensees hold a Class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. And licensee is charged with one violation of our rules stemming from July 7, 2021, a violation of Rule 4.01A, Sales to Minors. And Mr. Fogelman, I believe, is in the room. Don't yes, thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Blundy. I have a violation of 4.02A. No. No? No, Your Honor. The only one on the... I think you're on the wrong one, Mr. Chairman. I think oh. this is Conklin oh. Holdings. Yeah. Ah, you're right. Okay, I, I moved too quickly. I'm sorry. Yeah. The, the chairman was too too earnest and eager to to <laughs> move forward. Okay, you're right. I apologize. So, Mr. Fogelman, would you identify yourself for the record? Yes, please? thank you, Your Honor. Stephen W. Fogelman, on behalf of uh, licensees David and uh, Ivano uh, Parabano. And will this be an admission or denial? Uh, Your Honor, this would be an admission. Okay. Do you want to proffer? I sure do. Um, the Paravano family has um, been involved with this bar for many years. They're a, a longtime Highland Town family. Um, the Paravano brothers, the younger brothers, David, who is uh, here across the conference table from me, uh, and his brother Ivano Paravano, have been on the license, um, we believe, since at least 2007. And he dates that to his 14 year old son. Um, and the, the, uh, the sheet for the hearing, uh, D, says the license was transferred in 13 to these um, applicants. So I don't, know, I don't know where that squares because he said he's, he's, had, he's been on the license since 07. Did um, they change the entity that held the license at some it point? It may be. It may be. But like I say, he's long term. Um, he's run this bar. He was indeed. Um, he did have a bartender who didn't know what she was doing back in 2012, and she was open a few minutes uh, after two o'clock. There was also a failure to cooperate charge, but that was um, dismissed. So uh, there's never been an underage sale case here. This is a first violation of a 4.01A. Uh, in this case, uh, the bartender made a mistake and um, is, has been explained that uh, this is now a 100% ID check or you're fired. Um, so, you know, obviously it was only a month ago, so they have implemented this policy about a month ago and they haven't had any problems whatsoever. So, um, I thank you. I'd ask for, um, I'd be happy to be heard after disposition or I can just go ahead now. Uh, well, why don't you go ahead and then we'll have the commissioner see if they have questions. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, I would just ask that you consider, um, as you always are a very reasonable on the fines during COVID, uh, especially for licensees who aren't uh, repeat offenders uh, in a short amount of time. And I thank you. Mr. Do you have questions? No questions. No questions. Uh, do we have public comment on this case, Mr. Blundy? If any member of the public wishes to testify on this matter, please use the raise your hand feature in the WebEx platform. Mr. Chairman, I do not see any member of the public who wishes to testify. I'm Mr. Fogelman, on the basis of the materials contained in the charging documents in your proper, including your client's admission of the violation, I find the violation of Rule 4.01A on July 7, 2021. And based on a, a, a pretty good record that these folks have, I would impose a $50 fine and give them 30 days to pay. Commissioner? Commissioner Guy, based upon the, uh, the proffer given by Mr. Fogelman, uh, and, it, and the evidence uh, given this morning to the board, I would also concur with the violation of Rule 4.10A, sales to a minor taking place on July the 7th, 2021. I concur with the fine of $50 payable within 30 days. So based upon the charging documents, the property from Mr. Fogelman and the admission, I too find a violation of Rule 4.01A and concur with the imposition of a $50 fine. Thank, Thank you, Mike. Well. Well, for the record. What is it? The one violation report, age of parents, dated 7721. Um, exhibit number two, BCCP report, uh, detective LeBron, dated 7721. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fogelman. Thank you all. That concludes this matter before the board. Uh, licensee and council will receive correspondence from this agency with instructions on how to pay the fine. Thank, um, you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, ready for the next one? I am. I've apparently already been there. <laughs>
Well, we'll have to move Mr. Fogelman away for a minute. He'll be back. Uh, and move Mr. Kadensky in. The next matter before the board this morning, uh, licensee Amnipal Singh Man and Makanjit Singh, Man and Jaya Incorporated, trading as Mr. Joe's Bar and Cut Rate, 1 to 3 South Highland Avenue, Baltimore, Maryland, 21224. Licensees hold a Class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license and are charged with violations of two of the board's rules stemming from the same incident on July 7, 2021, a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors, and a violation of Rule 4.02A, inebriates and drug addict. Um, and Mr. Kadensky is in the room, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Kadensky, you would identify yourself for the record, please. Representing the um, licensees. And uh, Mr. Kadensky, are these going to be admissions or denials? I, I want to make an admission to, to the first one, um, which would be um, the sale to a minor 401A. Uh, um, I'd like to have some more information uh, on 402A. Um, um, I'm not really sure if there's a definition of inebriates uh, and drug addict in your rules. And um, I was just saying over 50 years of doing this, first time I've ever seen this. So let's see what this physically intoxicated patron was, please. Okay, who would testify for the board on this? Okay. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, Agent Perez, Chief Chris Amalis, and then BPD Vice was all there. I believe uh, one of the uh, DLLC inspectors would testify to that charge. Is that you, Agent Perez? I can testify to oh, the uh, 4.02. Okay. Okay. Chief Chris Amalis will. All right. Let's where Mr. Uh, Chris Amalis and also if there's going to be any um, testimony from the licensee, let's swear that person as well. Uh, there won't be any testimony from the licensee, Mr. Chairman. All right. Okay. Um, first, uh, Mr. Kadensky, will I be able to get the name of the person with you? I'll give you, I'm going to say to you right now, give me your name. Amber Paul Mann. Um, would you be able to spell that for me, please? It's, it's, it's on the docket. Do you see it the first? It's the first name. Okay. 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 The first one. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, Agent uh, Chris Malas, please raise your right hand. Okay. Um, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God or under penalty of perjury? I do. Thank you. Uh, Chief Inspector Chris Miles, can you tell us what you all observed with respect to this uh, customer on July 7th? Yes, Chairman. Um, on, that, on that evening, uh, the cadet gave us um, the text message that he was able to uh, get served uh, from the cashier. And when we went in, myself, Agent Perez, Inspector Robinson, and the vice unit to um, let the the manager and the cashier know that an underage police cadet was served. At that time, I witnessed the Hispanic male at the counter. This gentleman was falling over on the counter, um, could not walk. He was um, hitting against the counter and people. Um, he could visibly, um, he was visibly highly intoxicated or under some sort of um, impairment. Uh, and he had just been served alcohol. Um, I confronted the manager that was there. I explained to him that um, why was an individual in this state um, served alcohol? He didn't know the answer. He said the cashier is the one that did it. And at that time, I told my agent to also include that charge in um, the violations. Okay, Mr. Kadensky, you have questions for the chief? You know, who, who was that person? Yeah. Um, Sir, I didn't identify um, that individual. You didn't get his name? No, sir. And, and you know, usually I, I learned a long time ago investigations, you get who, what, where, when, and why. We don't have any of that, do we? We have the why and the where. Um, yeah. The who, and, um, for my investigation, is the licensee, is not the person of the public. All right. And then what did they buy? They bought, it was a beer. It was a large beer. I don't. I don't know what kind. 
I know it was an alcoholic beverage. Um, and I know that that individual should not have been served further alcohol. Do you know if the person had any special needs? I do not. Do you know if they had any other impairment in, uh, physically or mentally? I do not. So you made that your, were they drinking in the place when you came in? No, they were purchasing it. They were not drinking when, when so I So they, they were not drinking there and they, you didn't see them drinking in the place? That's correct. And regarding, you indicated that they were severely intoxicated. Then you said he, they were under influence of something. But I you said know what that intoxicated something or something else. They were very impaired. Or what's the something else? I, I'm not an expert um, on what he what that individual was on. Um, he was impaired by some substance. And and you you made the assumption that he was clearly intoxicated just by visibly. There's no breathalyzer and nothing like that. That's correct. Person was allowed to leave the store. Absolutely. And you had that many people there. Uh, it was approximately five. And all of you let the man leave. Absolutely. Didn't say anything though. I asked him if he was okay. And he said, he, said that he, not, he nodded his head. He was okay. He into me and the wall and continued to exit the establishment. Okay. And he went on his way. Yes. Now you said you talked to the manager. You identified a Kelly Carr as the person who was the uh, seller. Is that correct? Um, the female, correct. Okay. And um, so as far as the condition of the person, uh, you have nothing other than your visual as the person was intoxicated, but you don't know what they were under any other influence of any other um, issue. Is that correct? That's correct. I do not know what they were under. Correct. No special needs or if they had a disability mentally or physically? You don't know that. Um, I, I don't know um, if they had a disability. No, I don't okay. know their medical record. And no, nobody detained the person, nobody got their name. We, we don't do that, sir. We're there just for the licensee. Okay. So, I mean, if there was an issue there, you had the vice squad with you. You mean they wouldn't ask him either? There, there wasn't. He hadn't committed a, a crime. He was no. being served, but you have to ask the vice unit that. Um, yeah. There are rules. You're not allowed to serve a visibly intoxicated person. So okay. I use the same means that a bartender where a server is supposed to use to determine if someone is too intoxicated to serve, I used those same means to determine that this individual was intoxicated. But do you have any other information as to whether it was the person that had any other kind of a mental or physical impairments? No, sir. And they weren't drinking in your presence? No, sir. And otherwise, they, they exited the, the property and made their way wherever they were going? Hopefully. Okay. And then along with the, that, you said the, the vice squad was there. What, what's the purpose for the vice squad being there? You'd have to ask the vice squad. They're there. Know, they, uh, I mean, as far as we're concerned, they're there for protection for us, protection for the cadet. And um, they also do inspections and violations at liquor establishments. So mm -hmm. you've been working together for years, as you know. I don't have any further questions. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. Anything further, uh, Mr. Kennedy? No, I you know I'd make a motion on the. Uh, there's no way to indicate other than what the um, and I'm the observations of uh, Inspector Chief Inspector, excuse me, Chris Miles. I'm sure over there, but you know, as we have to have a little bit more here um, as to whether or not the person had any uh, physical or or mental impairments or any other reason. Uh, just to come to the conclusion that the person was intoxicated, you didn't see him drink anything, didn't see him um, uh, imbibe anything, and they everybody let him go on his own way. So for that reason, I would ask that that charge to be dismissed. Yeah, I would deny that for two reasons. One, I think that uh, the board is entitled to uh, base the determination on the observations of our chief inspector. But I also will tell you that when the chief inspector asked the establishment uh, person in charge, uh, they didn't protest and say that the person was disabled or anything else. They just pointed the finger at another employee and said it's her fault. Um, so it didn't sound like there was a reasonable explanation other than that he was drunk. Um, so Commissioner, do you have any questions? I have no, no questions. questions. No questions. Uh, we have public comment, Mr. Blundy. If any member of the public wishes to testify on this matter before the board, please use the raise your hand feature in the WebEx platform. 
Mr. Chair, I do not see any member of the public who wishes to testify. Okay. Uh, Mr. Clancy, on the basis of the materials contained in the charging document, um, the admission of the Rule 4.01A violation and the testimony received with respect to Rule 4.02A, I find violations of each of those rules on July 7, 2021. Um, this client seems to sell the minors every two years. They did it in 17, 19, and now they've done it in 21. They really need to tighten up that operation. Well, if, if, if I just may, just briefly, I, I don't want to, you know, uh, kill the horse here, but um, they've been having a very difficult time getting um, employees, and you've heard that story over and over again ad, ad nauseum. Uh, this particular individual, Kelly Carr, who I absolutely know myself, she's probably tried to buy 10 places in 15 years and every other way I know, and she bounces around, and when my client had talked to her. He thought that she had experience in the business, and she did not. And she has since been fired and uh, not part of the business. They are getting everybody uh, there to make sure they uh, check uh, all IDs. Everybody's going to be alcohol certified. And also, if they see anybody they feel has any kind of impairment for any particular reason, that they won't be served. Okay. Um I appreciate all that. I would impose $100 fines as to each of the violations based on their record and give them 30 days to pay. Commissioners? Commissioner Guy, based upon the evidence presented in the proffer of Mr. Kodinsky, I, all, I also too would find uh, in, violation, in violation of rule 4.01A, sales for a minor, in violation of rule 4.02A, in inebriates and drug addicts, both taking place on July the 7th, 2021, and I concur with the fine of $100 each for each offense payable in 30 days. Based upon the uh, proffer for Mr. Kadinsky, the admission to uh, for Rule 4.01A and the testimony of the Chief uh, Inspector, I too find a violation of Rule 4.1A on July 7th as well as a violation of Rule 4.02a on July 7th and concur with the imposition of a $100 fine for each. My positive, positive is for the record. Board Exhibit 1, Violation Report, Asian Perez, dated 7-7-21. Board Exhibit 2, BCPD Report, uh, Detective Greenhill, dated 7-7-21. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kudansky. Thank, thank you very much. That that concludes this matter before the board. Licensee and council will receive follow up correspondence from this agency with instructions on how to pay the fine, as ordered. Mr. Chair, are you ready for the the next hearing? Yes. Let me bring Mr. Fogelman back. All right. The the final matter before the board today, uh, licensee. Hector Camilo, Nitro LLC, trading as Aqua Bar and Grill, 3537 East Fairmount Avenue, Baltimore, Maryland, 21224. Licensee holds a Class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license, and licensee is charged with one violation of the board's rules stemming from July 7, 2021, a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors. And as I noted, Mr. Fogelman is counsel. Uh so would you identify yourself again, Mr. Fogelman? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Stephen W. Fogelman on behalf of licensee Hector Camillo. Can you hear, can you see both of us? Yes, and will All this right. be an admission or denial? This will be an admission, Your Honor. You want to proffer for us, please? I sure do. You may remember Mr. Camillo. Um, it was March 4th that he was before the board on an, um, an overcapacity case. And um, he strenuously, um, uh, uh, vigorously defended himself in that he it was so close uh the board dismissed those violations <laughs> um, it, look he he's a former uh, baltimore city police officer he knows when a violation has occurred and that's why uh it's an admission today he um is very very uh disappointed that uh mr vasquez had um did not ask for id like the case before um, he has established a 100% ID check policy where you're fired, no questions asked. And uh, he's taken a step further. He spent uh, several hundred dollars getting uh, Mariela Carcano, uh, Norma Barrentos, Erica Avila Garcia, and Mr. Vasquez um, 
uh, alcohol management certified in, in addition to himself. Those um, documents were sent to the liquor board a good, I think like a week or two ago. So they should be uh, at least in the hard file, if nothing else. He takes it very seriously, like I say, given his background. And he's uh, a little embarrassed, uh, but he is definitely learning from this and his uh, employees will be learning from this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the commissioners have questions? I have none. No questions. And uh, did I understand you correctly, Mr. Fogelman, that he won his case without you? No, it was me. It was my birthday. And uh, oh, okay. I thought it was you guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to point out that he did better on his own, but that's uh, that would have been. Uh, anyway, on the basis then uh, of the. Can I, Mr. Chair, can I ask if the further yeah. purpose? Yeah. Uh, does if any member of the public wishes to testify on this matter, uh, please use the raise your hand feature in the WebEx platform. Mr. Chair, I do not see anyone who wishes to testify. All right. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, on the basis then of the materials contained in the charging documents and the proffer from counsel, including the admission of his client. To the rule 4.01 a violation i find a violation of that rule on july 7 2021 i'd impose a 50 dollars fine and give him 30 days to pay commissioners commissioner guy based upon the evidence presented and the proffer of mr fogelman i too would also find them in violation of rule 4.01 a sales to an honor which took place on july the 7th 2021 I concur with the final $50 for this offense. Based upon the charging document, the uh, proffer from Mr. Fogelman and the admission, I too find a violation of rule 4.01A and concur with the imposition of a $50 fine. Thank, Thank you, you, Ms. Robinson. Mike Posibus for the record, Board Exhibit 1, Violation Report, Inspector Robinson, dated 7-7-21. And Board Exhibit 2, Baltimore City Police Department Report, Detective LeBron, dated 7-7-21. Thank you. Mr. Fogelman, thank you. Good luck to your client. That concludes this matter before the board. Uh, licensing counsel received correspondence from this agency with instructions on how to pay the fine imposed today. Um, Mr. Chairman, as you will note, uh, the final item was postponed. So that concludes all matters before the board. If there's nothing further, may I read the adjournment announcement? You may. The board will be in recess until Thursday, August 26, 2021. The board shall post on its website, provide notice to applicants and or attorneys and conduct a virtual hearing on this date. Please call our office at 410-396-4377 between 8.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. with any questions or concerns that you may have concerning this matter or any other matter. That is all we have for the board, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Okay, well, uh, thank you. I want to thank everyone who participated today and especially the commissioners and our staff for the good work they do. And I will see everybody on August 26th. Thank you. Thank Off you. the record? Yes. Off the record. <laughs>